Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sean and I'm going to show you how I have set up and customized my MacBook Pro for productivity, coding, data engineering, and for making YouTube content. This is not your average what's on my Mac video because I'm going to share everything that I do on my MacBook Pro. That's from browsing to coding to doing data engineering work. Along the way, I'm going to share stuff that might be useful to you. So stick around and watch this video. Oh, and if you're new here, and if you're into tech videos, productivity, or anything like that, then consider liking this video and hitting the subscribe button. One of the great apps that I enjoy on my Mac is called Rectangle. As a daytime Windows user, I'm so used to snapping apps to each side of my screen. This is something not available on Mac. So to overcome this, the very first thing that I do on my Mac is install Rectangle. Once installed, I can use shortcuts to snap windows to either side of the screen. I can use the control plus option plus arrow keys to snap the windows to the grid. And to go full screen, I can use control plus option plus return key to make windows go full screen. To put windows side by side, I can use the control plus option and left arrow key. And then to put it on the side, do the same thing, but the right arrow key. These shortcuts are fully customizable and they help me save so much time in organizing my screens. Usually I have my notes app open on the left hand side and my web browser open on the right hand side to give me some ideas when I'm coming up with video scripts. The best part is that rectangle is free. So I think all Mac users should use this. The next app is called usage. This is one of the lesser known Mac utilities app. Usage is basically a menu bar app that comes with cool customizable popover widgets and advanced features to track your system's performance. This app gives tons of widgets that I didn't know I really wanted. Basically, it's just stat for nerds. I use it for tracking my battery percentage, CPU, and memory usage on my Mac. But there are so many customizable options available that you can customize it however you like. I use the free version of this app and it gives me what I need. When using this app, I saw how much extra RAM and CPU usage Google Chrome was using on my Mac. So after seeing this, I started using Safari over Google Chrome and I noticed that it does not hog up so much memory on my Mac. And I get a better battery life when using Safari over Google Chrome. So this usage app helps me use my MacBook Pro more efficiently. The next app, well, it's not really an app. It's a built-in Mac OS feature and it's called Screen Capture. I can use the command shift three to capture entire screenshot, or I can use command shift four to capture part of the screen, or even use the command shift five to record my Mac screen. This is so useful for capturing things on my Mac and I highly recommend that you remember the shortcuts. I use the screen recording feature a lot for making my Python shorts. And this also comes in handy for making other tutorials for clients, users, or anyone in general. I can even record my audio, show mouse clicks and more. Also, I can record my entire screen or just a portion on the Mac. Overall, it makes my life so much easier to record stuff on my Mac. I really like the fact that this screen capture is a native feature on Mac OS. Usually on Windows, you have to buy either PowerPoint or third party software to just to capture screen recordings on your Windows PC. So kudos to Apple for doing this. The next app is called Amphetamine, and I use it to keep my Mac awake when I'm doing some intensive work. Once it's active, it will keep your Mac awake even after you close the lid. So since 2012, I had been using an app called Caffeine to keep my Mac awake, but along the way, it got discontinued and it's no longer supported by its developer. So recently, I found Amphetamine, and it's the best app you can use for keeping your Mac awake. You can even set duration, how long you want your Mac to stay awake from a few minutes to a few hours, or even set it to never. It really comes in handy when I want to leave my Mac display on or my system turned on for longer periods of time. Usually when I'm downloading stuff, I turn this app on. Again, like all apps, this one is also free. Next app is Night Shift. I've been using some version of this for the last 10 years, like f.lux, if anybody remembers that. But I'm glad that Apple just integrated this with all of their Apple products. One of the very first things I do is turn on night shift on all my Apple devices. It helps me relieve my eyes from strain as blue light is not good for my health. I turn on my night shift and I set it to sunrise to sunset, which automatically shifts the colors throughout the day. And by the morning time, it resets back to the original color. Only time I turn it off is when editing YouTube videos. When I set up my new Mac, I always create three desktops. 
usually one desktop is for DaVinci Resolve for mainly editing videos, and the other one is dedicated for coding and development. Speaking of coding, here are the things I currently use on my Mac for coding and data engineering. When it comes to coding, the very first thing I do is install Brew. I highly recommend that you get this because Brew is a package manager for Mac OS. And you can use it for quickly installing programs like Python, Node.js, and various other command line tools. It's very handy and it should be the very first thing you should install if you're doing any kind of development work on your MacBook Pro. The next thing I install is Python. Now, MacBook Pro comes with Python 2.7 pre-installed, but I mainly use the latest version 3.10. The next thing I installed is Visual Studio Code. This by far is my favorite IDE for coding. For development work, all my legacy stuff has been in PHP and using Bootstrap and Microsoft SQL Server as the backend. But lately I've been working on developing apps and using React Native. So my Mac comes in handy as I have Xcode to fully test how my apps are performing on iOS. For all my coding, VS Code is my number one go-to IDE. With various plugins, it makes my development so much simple and easier and exciting. My favorite VS Code extensions are Tabline, Remote SSH, Auto Rename Tags, and many more. I might even do an in-depth overview of my VS Code extension, so let me know in the comments below if you would like to see something like that. And if I do make it, I'll link it up here. For most of my data engineering work, I mainly use Microsoft SQL Server for managing databases, and for big data, I use Amazon Redshift. But mainly for most of the work that I do, I usually install Azure Data Studio on my MacBook Pro because I cannot install SQL Server Management Studio as it's only for Windows. So using Azure Data Studio is a great alternative. For developing data pipeline, I script all that using Python, which I develop all on my Mac. I also use Postman for building and testing APIs, which is a fairly common use these days. One of the great things is that you can download it from Mac and use it natively so it does not get lost in your Chrome tabs. And building and testing APIs has become so much easier using Postman. Before I do any kind of development for building out my data pipeline, I usually test them using the Postman to make sure that they're working correctly. For data visualization, I use Tableau Desktop. It allows me to make data-driven decisions with ease. You can use your data to tell a story by plotting charts, graphs, and maps. The best part is that you can combine data from multiple sources, meaning databases, CSV files, JSON files, and whatnot. And finally, you can use all that to build good dashboards. Tableau works great on Mac and they offer a free version called Tableau Public for Mac and Windows user. So if you are looking for data visualization software, then do try Tableau out. The next thing that I use on my Mac is called a remote desktop. Sometimes, by which I mean most of the times, I have to access a Windows machine in order to complete a task that cannot be done on my Mac. So to do this and without leaving my Mac, I use a remote desktop connection and remote into the server. With the remote desktop app, I can pretty much access any Windows machine, server, PC, or a laptop. I can even remote into Linux machines if they have the XRDP installed on them. So I really enjoy using this when accessing Windows PCs. Well, that was a pretty short and simple summary of what I use on my Mac related to development and data engineering. If you want a further detailed video on that, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to make it. The next set of apps are for content creation and I mainly use it for making my YouTube videos. For editing my videos, I mainly use DaVinci Resolve. It is an extremely powerful and professional video editing software. And I sometimes wonder why people want to use Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere when DaVinci Resolve is absolutely free and it offers the same, if not better, features. About three years ago, I switched over to DaVinci Resolve. It was at a point when I was using Adobe Premiere Pro and it crashed at the absolute worst time. The project was unrecoverable at that point and I just had had it. So since then, I switched over to DaVinci Resolve and it's been working great for me. DaVinci Resolve includes all the pro features like cutting, keyframing, color grading, and audio options. The best part is that DaVinci Resolve is free, although they do offer a paid version. For my use case, free version has been working great for me for editing videos. The next app deals with audio. I've been working on refining my audio, and by the way, I don't know if you can tell, I've gotten a new mic, a new everything pretty much to improve the audio quality, so let me know if it did help or not in the comments below. But for audio purposes, I use the Audacity app for refining my raw audio, 
by applying like noise reduction, compressor, and adding bass to my voice. So Audacity is really good at fixing raw and unprocessed audio files, and it works great on my Mac PC. The next audio app is called OBS Studio. While Audacity is meant for post video editing, meaning that you once you record your audio, then you apply all the filters and whatnot, OBS Studio is meant to be used while you're recording or streaming. In my case, with this mic setup, I've been using OBS Studio to apply all the filters and noise reductions while I'm recording audio. So try using either the Audacity or the OBS Studio for recording voices. It makes adjustments on the fly a lot easier and I highly recommend using OBS Studio for all your voiceover and audio recording work. For making YouTube thumbnails, I use Canva. This is not an app, but it's rather a web application that you use on your Safari or Chrome. It's easy to use and comes with pre-built templates that you can use for making YouTube thumbnails and like you can make a bunch of other things. I mainly just use it for and in the past, all of my thumbnails have come from Canva. I think I need to learn Photoshop at some point to take my thumbnails to that next level, but for now, Canva will just do fine. For consuming all my content, I use both Safari and Chrome. For my browsing and YouTube content management and any kind of media consumption, I use Safari 75% of the time, as it's really lightweight and in my experience does not eat much memory or battery. I use Chrome for web development as it's got the best debugging options of any browser. Also, the Chrome extensions help me customize my Mac with ease and help me enrich my browsing experience. But all this comes at a cost since Chrome eats up a lot of my RAM and drains my battery faster. This last section is related to productivity apps. I try to keep a simple productivity system. I do all my note taking on the Apple Notes app. I even create the video scripts on them. And the best part is that I can organize my notes by creating folders and subfolders. For my video scripts, the notes app helps me quickly write down new ideas no matter where I am. I usually start taking notes at a high level bullet points on my phone and then turn them into full fledged scripts using my MacBook Pro. Also on the notes app, the ability to quickly add a to do list, adding tables really comes in handy for me. And the best feature is that you could share your notes. I typically share my notes all the time. This helps me build a better collaboration amongst my friends, family, and whoever I need to share my notes with. Out of all the apps, I think my notes app is the most useful right now for making YouTube content. My next productivity app is called Notion. I'm sure you, most of you are familiar with it. Lately, I've been using Notion to keep me on track. I plan and schedule my YouTube videos through Notion. It's a good app that helps me build my workflow and helps me organize things in a way I want to see them. Notion is highly customizable and there are tons of things you can do while using it. I use Notion for viewing my tasks in different ways like tabular or timeline or you know any kind of way. I think it's a great tool for very small teams like two to five people to stay on track and stay organized. But sometimes I just find Notion to be too complicated so I revert back to my notes app. One of the best things I like about Mac OS is the seamless integration between iPhone and a MacBook Pro. I find it so convenient using iMessages from my MacBook Pro. And from time to time I really like getting phone calls on my Mac. With iMessage, I can start a conversation on my phone and continue easily on my Mac and vice versa. Try doing that on a PC and no, WhatsApp does not count. For my email, I just use the Gmail app. I don't like using clients. I think Gmail has a clean interface for checking your mail, has handy predictive text searches, and it predicts when you're typing text. And it gives you the flexibility with notifications and organizes your email properly in the right buckets. If you're a full-time Gmail user like me, then you don't need to look any further for a third-party Gmail client. So that's pretty much it, guys. I go through all these apps throughout the week. I use them for making content, for doing data engineering work, and doing coding. Let me know what you guys think about this, and let me know any feedback in the comments below. Again, consider liking this video and hitting the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.